Well, in this example we have here, we are given a function defined by cosine x minus sine x for x between 0 and 2 pi. Now, the purpose behind uh, this small example here is uh, to apply study of functions on trigonometric functions, which basically means uh, studying variations and concavity in some particular points of a given function in order to be able to sketch its graph eventually, since the function given is not a standard or a basic trigonometric function that we already know the graph of. So for that reason, we're going to have to study this function in order to be able to graph it eventually. So over here, first, we're going to start by determining particular points of this function, which are the x and the y intercept. So over here in uh, part A, regarding the y intercept, now the y intercept is the easiest. So the y-intercept uh, is for x equals to 0. So I start by evaluating uh, f of 0. So cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0, which leaves me with a 1. So the y-intercept is, in fact, the point 0, 1. However, regarding the x-intercept, I need to find values of x for which y is 0. So over here, we start by setting the function f of x equals to 0. Now, f of x is 0 when cosine x is equals to sine x. However, uh, this is not an equation in the form sine equals to cosine, uh, sorry, sine equals to sine or cosine equals to cosine. But Cosine and sine being equal, we do know that means that tan x is 1. So, in fact, these two equations are equivalent. And remember here that we're solving the equation between uh, 0 and 2 pi. So, tan x equals to 1. So, I start by uh, setting a basic angle with a tan equals to 1, which in fact is pi over 4. That is a remarkable angle that we know with tan equals to 4. Now tan x equals to tan of pi over 4. Now an angle with, uh, sorry, two different angles with equals tan, it means that these two angles are diametrically opposite on uh, the unit circle which means that these two angles basically differ by half a term. They differ by pi. So the rule here would actually be x equals to pi over 4 plus k pi, where k is an integer. And now we need uh, to test different values of k in order to be able to retrieve the angles that satisfy this condition inside 0 and 2 pi. So we notice that when k is 0, x equals to pi over 4. Now that is in um, the interval given. And for k equals to 1, we have x to be 5 pi over 4, which is also in the given interval. So that is an accepted value. Now for any other integer k, the values would actually be outside that interval. All of those would basically be rejected. So the x-intercepts of this function are pi over 4, 0, and 5 pi over 4, 0. So over here in part a, we've determined some particular points of the function that would really help us graph it later on with more accuracy. So this is regarding the x and the y-intercept. Now in part b, we're asked to find the intervals over which f is increasing and decreasing, and then we need to find the local extrema. Now we know that the extrema of uh, a function are the points where the function is maximum or minimum. And by figuring out where the function is increasing and where the function is decreasing, we'd be able to retrieve this, uh, these local extrema. So over here, we need to start by studying the variations of the function. And we do know that 
studying the variation of a function would really depend on the sign of its first derivative. So when the first derivative, now if we were to recall this, when the first derivative is positive, the function would be increasing. And when the first derivative is negative, the function would be uh, decreasing. And that is because, if we were to recall it a bit, and that is because the first derivative represents the different slopes of the tangents at different points of the curve. So if the slopes are increasing, the curve would increase a lot. If the slopes are decreasing, then the curve would also decrease along. So this is why the variation of the function really depends on the first derivative. So over here for part B, I need to start by finding f prime of x. So f prime of x, now f of x is cosine minus sine. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine x and uh, the derivative of sine is cosine, so negative sine would leave with the derivative of negative sine. So that is our first derivative. I need to study its sign. Now, whatever function we are dealing with, whenever we need to study the sign of any expression, what we need to do first is determine its roots, because the sign of the expression we are studying really depends on where that expression is zero, because it does change sign, perhaps around the roots. So we need to start by finding the roots of that derivative, which is the second step into setting up our table of variation of the function. So f prime of x equals to zero would actually lead to sine x equals to negative cosine. Now sine and cosine being opposites, in that case tan x would be equals to negative 1. Now we do know that a negative 1 is tan of negative pi over 4 because tan is negative in quadrant 4 or 2, so we do consider one of them here, so it's negative pi over 4 if we were to consider it in quadrant 4. So again, two angles with the same tan, then they differ by pi, by half a turn. So x would in fact be equals to negative pi over 4 plus k pi. So over here, again, we need to uh, test for different values of k, where k over here, of course, is an integer, that would give you uh, the value of x between 0 and uh, 2 pi. So for k equals to 0, it's negative. It's outside the interval. So for k equals to 1, it would actually be negative pi over 4 plus pi, which is 3 pi over 4. And for x, uh, sorry, here it's for k, equals to 2, it would be 2 pi minus pi over 4, which is 7 pi over 4. Now, for any other values of k, that would, uh, they would, the values of x would eventually be rejected. So, um, over here, these are the roots of the first derivative over uh, the given domain. So, we start by setting up our table of variation. Now recall that a table of variation consists of three rows. The first one would be a row for x where it actually uh, place the domain of the function, restricted values if they exist. Now this function does not have any restricted values. And of course the roots of uh, the derivative. The second row would actually be a table of signs of the first derivative. So a table of sign consists of uh, showing the roots and then studying the signs of uh, the first derivative or that uh, expression around the roots. Now over here, if we were to really determine the sign of the derivative in each interval, all we can do is just uh, test for a point. Uh, for example here, pi over 2 is in this interval between 0 and 3 pi over 4. So if I were to find the derivative at 
pi over 2. So negative sine of pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is uh, 1, so that's negative 1, minus cosine of pi over 2, and cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So f prime of pi over 2 is negative 1. So over here, over this interval, the derivative is negative. And even though we just tested for a single value over uh, that interval, we could in fact generalize the sign over the whole interval for a reason that from 0 till 3 pi over 4, the first time the derivative encounters a root is at 3 pi over 4, so it can't have possibly changed sign before 3 pi over 4. So similarly, uh, you determine the sign of the derivative over each of the following two intervals. For example, here, uh, 3 pi over 4 and 7 uh, pi over 4, we know that we have pi between them. That is, we're, we're trying to go for uh, the most particular case possible. So we do know that pi is between them, and sine of pi is 0, cosine pi is negative 1, so negative negative 1, that's a 1 positive, so the derivative is positive over that interval. Similarly, we're going to end up having it negative over the following interval. <clears throat> so that is uh, the second row of our table of uh, variation. Now, uh, the third row would actually consist or show the variations and the behavior of the function over the given domain. So when the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. When the derivative is positive, the function is increasing. And when the derivative is negative, it would be decreasing. Now we just evaluate the images. Now we evaluate the images through f, which is cosine x minus sine x. So at x equals to 0, it's 1. At 2 pi, it would also be 1. Now at 3 pi over 4, at 3 pi over 4, keep in mind that in case uh, you're working this out without a calculator, that uh, 3 pi over 4 is pi minus pi over 4. So you'd have to really apply the transformation formulas of pi minus alpha for cosine and sine here in order to evaluate the exact value. However, if you were to be using your calculators, you'd be, you'd be able or capable of determining the value using your calculator, which is um, negative square root of 2 here and square root of 2 here. So we'd notice that f is uh, increasing. So f is increasing over the interval 3 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. And f is decreasing over. We could just take um, the union of these two interval where you'd actually have the function uh, decreasing. You could just open or close the bounds at the roots of the derivative. It doesn't uh, really matter here. Okay, and now regarding the local uh, maximum. Now, uh, the local maximum would actually exist where the function increases than decreases. So that would be the point 7 pi over 4 square root of 2 and the local minimum would actually be at 3 pi over 4 negative square root of 2. So this is regarding the um, table of variation of the function which now in the process of studying the function we have uh, basically determined the particular points of the function which are the x and the y intercepts and we have also determined the variation of the function so now we know where the function increases and where it decreases so in the second part of uh, this video we're going to finish up studying this function by determining the concavity of the function over this domain in order to end up graphing our function.